You're entering the MSP Zone, a podcast for the managed services community, covering news, analysis, and interviews from around the globe. Elevate your MSP game by staying in the MSP Zone. And now, your host, Charles Weaver. Good day, everyone. And a happy St. Patrick's Day for all of you out there celebrating. And I'm sure there are some of you celebrating. Today, we are talking about a pretty uh, revolutionary topic. Our managed services clients on a collision course with vendors. No, we do not mean the MSPs. We mean vendors, downstream vendors. Uh, that's what we're talking about today. And it's going to indicate kind of the progression of managed services uh, practice, best practices. It's going to implicate uh, supply chain um, po- politics, uh, some legal issues. There's actually a lot of legal issues uh, involved in this topic. And as always, we like to have uh, experts in their field to come in and unpack and analyze and make simple some of these more complex uh, issues. And today, uh, welcome back to the MSP Zone, Rob, uh, our old friend, Rob Scott. Thank you, Charlie. Good to be back. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Indeed. I hope you're wearing green today. I am. <laughs> uh, good. So, hey, let's just dive right in. Um, are, so when we say managed services customers on a collision course with vendors, for many, not just many episodes here on MSP Zone, but on, for many years, we've been talking about, you know, channel conflict, right? The the goal of, of, of any vendor is to try to get as close to the customer as possible and, you know, inevitably standing in the way uh, is the MSP. And that's why the MSP has become so powerful uh, as a group is because they, they hold the relationship with the customer. The vendors know that, and that's, that's a reality that they have to deal with. That, that, so that's channel politics. That's channel conflict, and we've talked about that. We've, we've also got this other issue out here, which you have been a, a big champion of, Rob, uh, on this, on this concept of uh, of not just rights, I don't want to call it rights, but on on the on the relationship that the customer has with the MSP, the relationship that the MSP has with the customer, with the vendor, the, the downstream supply chain vendors to the MSP, and now how that is kind of it's an accordion almost getting smashed with the MSP in the middle and the end users and the vendors. Are, are they're going to have some sort of interaction, maybe conflict, maybe a collision course, as we called it in our title today. Can you just unpack this and tell us a little bit about what, what your perspective is on this scenario? Well, the collision is the end user is injured in a, say, a privacy injury. There's a, 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 a vendor tool that's being used by an MSP that, tool has a vulnerability that creates a, a loss of data or a compromise of uh, or un- unauthor- unauthorized access to uh, end user customer data that requires uh, breach notification or other actions that are very expensive and it really boils down to who's going to pay uh, for those kinds of injuries and, and those injuries arise frequently and you know I counsel my managed services clients to disclaim liability in their contracts with their customers for injuries that are caused by third-party solutions, vendor tools. The MSP can't be the insurance policy for whether all the tools in the ecosystem are going to perform correctly. And that needs to be made clear. At the same time, vendors are saying to the MSP, we don't have a relationship with your client. You own that relationship. You buy the tools from us. You resell them to your customer. And uh, anything that happens when you're using our tools is either your responsibility or the customer's responsibility. So, you know, I think a few episodes back, you and I were talking about the uh, the position of, of, of MSPs and having to 
kind of capture all of the, you know, capture too much risk, both on the customer side, trying to push it off on the MSP, and now on the vendor side. And so what you're, what you're really saying is, look, we'll take on the risk, we the MSP, we'll take on the risk that we're responsible for. But don't hold us to account for stuff that we don't control, right? If it's Microsoft Azure going crazy with this Hafnium thing, don't hold us, the MSP, responsible for something that's out of our control. I mean, is it, is it that 100%, simple? 100%. And, and that's fine when the vendors offer an end-user license agreement that governs the relationship between the vendor and the end-user customer. And it provides some remedies to the customer for negligence or, or product failures that result in harms to the customer. But the structure that's dangerous is the one where the MSP says, don't hold me accountable for what third parties do. And then there's a third party solution that causes an injury and the agreement between the MSP and the third party vendor tool is uh, we have no duty to or relationship with the end user customer and we take no responsibility for anything that happens while the tool is being used so i, I that's would that's where the that's where the collision course is going to happen gotcha okay so I, I i accept everything you just said rob i i'm assuming right now the the after effects of the the solar winds sunburst and now the the microsoft uh, hafnium uh, you know attacks are yet to be felt, meaning that we haven't seen the legal outcome of, of, I'm not even aware of legal challenges yet on these, but I'm assuming they're being filed. Um, how long is it going to be before we start to see some of that um, get shaken out and have some decisions that we can, you know, you know, re reflect on? Look, I think it's going to be, you know, quite some time. And then, and then, you know, you might never get, you know, the full details of what transpired. Um, the important thing is this, no matter what the system is, no matter what the security um, um, commitment is of the vendor, all systems are vulnerable. And as an MSP, we have to be prepared to be candid with clients about that. We have to be able to you know, contract with clients in a way that recognizes that there are criminals in the world. And, we're not insuring the client's IT systems against all criminal acts. Um, and what these <clears throat> situations show is that sometimes the very tools that we adopt in IT because we think they create more security uh, are the ones that lead to the vulnerability or, or the privacy um, incident. Rob, and... and Continue thought. Go ahead. So, so I, I just think that, you know, whether it's these particular cases that you're talking about or others that, you know, are not well publicized but are happening every day, uh, the, the, the lesson in this for MSPs is uh, deploying uh, vendor solutions in your customer environments is risky for you and risky for the customer. And you need to look after both sides of it for the customer. But, but you don't want to be putting your customers in 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 precarious deals uh, based on the vendors you select. Okay. Uh, to, to, to put some perspective on this, it's not like using Microsoft Exchange is inherently dangerous. It's it's the fact is that now Everybody is a target because that's just the nature of cybersecurity. But it's not like the the customers using that technology or the MSPs managing it on their behalf are doing things that are wild and reckless and increasing behavior. I just want to make sure that that's clear to everybody. We're, I'm not saying that, I don't, Rob. I don't think you're saying that. Look, I, I think you know. I think when it comes to mail security, there are different levels of maturity, and I'm sure there are some. You know. Um, systems that are undermanaged or, you know, not being properly updated or looked after in a professional manner. But that's not really the point that's being made here. What we're saying is all systems, no matter how good they are, are vulnerable. Agreed. Okay. So now that we've got that, 
then then it seems like there's two options. The MSP can do what you're saying, and it sounds like they should do this anyway, is go to their local managed services lawyer, Scott and Scott, uh, for, for one, and get their contracts updated so that they are starting to include uh, liability disclaimer provisions related to vendors. That's option one. Option two. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's paramount. Okay. Uh, a follow-up question, if I may. If you had to guess, what is the percentage of the market, MSP market, that have actually updated those types of provisions in their, in their service agreements? My guess is um, very few. Under 10%? Uh, I, I I don't know, but but I would say that if, if if the if the company in question is using contracts that weren't uh, updated relatively recently, or weren't you know drafted by an experienced attorney in the field, the chances are that these this and other disclaimers that we um, include in our agreements likely would be missing. Okay, so so. Suffice to say, you should all go and check your contracts. Make sure that you have something that touches on what, what Rob said. I think that's a good baseline uh, starting point. L- let's talk about insurance. Uh, option two, the, the, the MSPs and their customers could go and amend their insurance coverage to specifically say, look, we, the MSP, are going to help this customer manage this this part of their technology. We can't help it if, if cyber criminals attack Microsoft Exchange or exploit you know, solo, uh, an RMM platform. So we can't be responsible for that. We want coverage that will protect our customer from that. Is that an option? Yes, but you have to be very clear. Typically, your insurance is going to cover for negligent acts um, arising by you or a failure for you to honor the contract. So you could wind up in a situation where, you know, you have a loss by a vendor, your customer blames you, your carrier comes along and says, um, this is outside the scope of our insurance. It says clearly here in your contract, you're not responsible for this. I'm not going to go pay the customer when it's clear in the contract that we're not legally obligated to do so. So, so the only party in that scenario is, so that we just explained that has not been addressed is the vendor. They're the only That's, ones who have said, hey, don't look to us. Don't look to us. Yep. Yep. And that's unacceptable. And that's and that's what your your that's the collusion, which is you think that this is going to hit uh, our market. I, I think personally, we may be getting to that point now. I mean, I think the collusion may be starting to happen. But um, what is the outcome, Rob? I mean, where do we go from here if this collusion is is going to happen soon or is happening? Yeah, take the hypothetical case, Charlie, where the tool causes a privacy injury. You know, the MSP is investigating on behalf of the customer. Um, the vendor is saying, uh, yeah, there was a, there was a, a, a compromise or, you know, an issue with our tool. And then it gets fought, you know, you got to fight it out in court. And, you know, the probability of winning a case like that is reduced significantly if, you know, in your vendor, in, in the agreement with the vendor, uh, it's not clear that the vendor has to take responsibility for their part. The you know MSP should not be putting in technology into you know client accounts when they're the trusted advisor from a vendor who says we don't stand behind our product. So, I just want to make sure I heard that correctly. You what what we're saying here, Rob, is that if the MSP selects a vendor and the vendor says, I am not going to be responsible for anything, anything that goes wrong. You and your customer are on your own from a liability standpoint. That is the behavior that 
is is the cause of the collision, but also is the solution uh, to the collision happening again in the future, and that is to stop doing business or stop introducing those types of technologies into the managed services portfolio stack. Yes, 100%, because you can't put, and look, when the vendor is saying, I don't stand behind it, and all the risk is on you and your client, and then you disclaim the risk to your client, you're putting in a solution for your client for which when they get injured, there's no remedy. And who, what MSP that cares about their clients would ever do that? Oh, I, I get you. I mean, look, I, I, there's no louder champion of, of, of channel good behavior that, than, 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 than you or I. I mean, we've t- been talking about this for nigh on 20 years, but what is the practical leverage for the MSPs uh, in the channel to get these some of these big vendors to actually move on this on this issue? Look, you know, the other the other option is why does the MSP have to be in the middle of it? Why doesn't the MSP just resell the solution? So on the vendor's paper. So okay, so let let's all right. Let let me let me uh, let me make sure I get this. So I'm an MSP. I've got vendor Y. Let's say my vendor Y is a manufacturer of email solutions. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not saying who. I'm just saying an email platform. And instead of me, well, okay. So all right, th- th- this is probably already set up this way to a certain degree, but. Instead of me selling that through on my own paper, I'm going to say, you, customer, go to that vendor Y, get their product, and then I will manage it. But my contract with you is stating that if anything happens on their platform, you deal with them. Is that, did I get it right? Or, or I'll deal with them on your behalf, but I'm not accepting responsibility clearly for the failures. And there's a license between the vendor and the end user customer in that situation where it sets forth, you know, the risk balancing and the indemnity and the things that, you know, and and as long as there's, you know, commercially reasonable terms there, you resell to the client on their paper. But what you can, or, or, or you can be the licensee. And and there be a license agreement to you, but also an end user license agreement that contains commercially reasonable terms. But the notion that an MSP would intro, introduce a technology into a client where there's no end user license agreement and no terms that bind the vendor to the end user's uh, injuries, that is improper. In my opinion, I, I, yeah. I would counsel MSPs not to bring those technologies. So, so, so we are, so we are dealing now with a situation because I'm, I'm sure you're aware of it. I'm aware of uh, several uh, fairly prominent uh, vendors. I'm, I won't name them who specifically avoid handling customer inbound customers, right? They'll, they'll defer the customer or deflect the customer to a channel partner and say, no, 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 we don't want to do business with you. You go with a partner. So, so that's not going to change in your scenario. What's going to change is the vendor. It's going to be the vendor paper. So it's, how does that deal with SPLAS now? I mean, so all the MSPs are dealing with service provider licensing agreements. So under, under Microsoft SPLA, the Microsoft enters into an, an agreement with the service provider called the SPLA agreement that authorizes the partner to resell Microsoft's licenses. And all of the licensing is subject to the licensing rules that are in the SPUR, which is stands for service provider licensing use rights. It's the, it's the SPLA version of the PER, which is the, the, the the licensing rules for uh, non-commercial licenses. So, mm-hmm. so the Microsoft situation is exactly the type of situation that works fine, because 
that end user has privity with Microsoft. So the only thing that's stopping, the only thing missing is the MSP having the updated agreement that says to the customer, I'm just reminding you, if anything goes wrong with Microsoft, it's their fault. I will help you, but I'm not your indemnifier. That's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. And under SPLA specifically, uh, there are a number of provisions that need to be in the customer agreement. Microsoft's agreement requires the MSP to include a number of provisions in its agreement with the customer um, for Microsoft's benefit. Sure. And then you you would also need the additional provisions that you mentioned to protect the MSP. Um, but but that's an example of the reseller model where the, the MSP is on the hook for the licensing rules and for the licenses it deploys. And it could be caught in the middle in a billing dispute or an audit between Microsoft and the end, and the end user. But it's not a situation where if Microsoft was negligent and caused an injury to the end user or, you know, another claim, another uh, 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 defect uh, causes injury to the end user, you know, there's nothing that says, you know, Microsoft doesn't have privity with the end user because, you know, a lot of the applications are, are, are subject to a EULA, an end user agreement. I don't want to put you on the spot, but is in this scenario, is Microsoft a good standard to follow for other vendor relationships the MSPs have that would implicate this type of situation? Yes. I mean, structurally, you know, the, the SPLA arrangement, you know, although it's flawed and fraught with some peril uh, from, a, from a contractual structure perspective, I think it's fine. The, the ones that concern me is if, you know, Microsoft was saying to the, the MSP, you know, we're selling you the licenses, you have the right to resell them for whatever you want, and we have no arrangement with your customer. That, it, that, I, that is the one that concerns me. So I, Because I, when your tool, when the vendor's tool injures the customer, uh, the customer is going to be angry at the vendor. And if the customer's agreement with the MSP says MSP is not responsible, uh, you know, the only logical target is that vendor who caused the injury. Sure. And, and for, for Microsoft and, and, you know, Microsoft 365, a very popular, you know, productivity suite, I, I get it. I think most MSPs out there listening to this podcast get it. Let me challenge uh, this a little bit, uh, and, and you know, talk about something that's less. It's more under the covers, right? It's more like the the ingredients going into the soup or into the, you know the, the ingredients for the cake. Remote monitoring platforms, ticketing platforms, um, things that are not really easily uh, known or understood by the by the customer to receive the managed services they're receiving. How, how about those? Are you suggesting that the, M, the customer would go directly to the vendor and, and license those? Uh, not necessarily. You know, as, as long as the use of the tool is subject to an end-user license agreement where the you know, terms of use between the end-user, your customer, and the vendor is set forth and, and the vendor is taking on, you know, in limited but market level responsibility, uh, that structure is fine. If you can't get that structure, then it makes sense to put the and the vendor will sell direct or the vendor will allow you to resell. Uh, those options become necessary when the structure requires there to be no privity between the the end user customer and the vendor. So, so no, no, no customer. I'm not going to want to go out, right? I'm telling you right now. If I, as a managed services customer, I'm not going to want to go to ConnectWise, Datto, SolarWinds, and Kaseya, and and deal with all the different licensing and say, okay, I need this, I need this. You know, that's one of the benefits of going to an MSP is getting all that all together. 
I agree. And as long as the MSP can navigate through all that without taking on undue risk or putting the client in a, in a lose lose, then it's great. But I'm talking about in those situations where you, you can't protect the MSP, then what do you do? So it sounds like we're now at the point where maybe the MSPs need to start banding together and acting in a single fashion to their benefit and start to pressure their vendors across the board for a, a bit more flexibility in terms of protection of and, and indemnification is probably not the right word, but ownership of some of the risk of, of, the, uh, of the platform, the technology not working the way it should or being compromised through no yeah, fault of the uh, MSPs. Look, you know, should they do that? That's a, you know, that's a question about, you know, you know, how important is it to them and all that. I, I'm suggesting that legally um, an MSP has to be cognizant of risk in this environment. And that risk is coming at them from both sides, both in terms of their relationship with their customers and the relationship with the vendors whose tools they use. And the MSPs that you know hone in on that um, risk and manage that multi-party relationship in a way that they're protected and the customers are protected. Uh, those are going to be the MSPs that are going to be long-term successful. Uh, those that take undue risk, a fair amount of them are going to um, have that, you know, risk is going to come back to bite them. Yeah. So, okay. So you, you've got a handful of options out there. If you're, if you're paying attention, you're saying, okay, what, what's the recap? The recap is this. You, you've got this. You've got an inevitable risk, right, which is why MSPs are in such high demand and will continue to be in such high demand for the foreseeable future. You've got customers who are acknowledging that and need the MSP uh, guidance, and you've got the downstream vendors who supply the technology used by the MSPs, and even that technology is, is, is vulnerable and subject to attack. So... The MSPs need to take ownership of what they're in control of. And you know what? So, so does the customer and so does the vendor. And I think all you're saying, Rob, all I'm hearing is reasonableness across all three of those parties so that each party is bringing to the table some measure of, of indemnification of their own liability. And, and, uh, and that, that's all. I mean, it, it, it's quite reasonable what you're saying. Look, everybody should be responsible for the acts and omissions of their company and, and their, and any injuries that are caused by their products. Nobody should be taking on undue risk. Nobody should be asked to ensure that criminal acts of third parties won't impact. But when vendors want to disclaim their own negligent acts, that becomes a, a, a complicated thing to recommend to a client. It, it does. And I think that it's a, just a final note on this. It's very good advice for for MSPs to start having these conversations with their customers to say, look, all this stuff you're seeing about the Microsoft breach, the Sunburst breach, these are things that are outside of our control as your MSP. So let's talk about how we interact, how we interrelate, and let's make sure that we're all on the same page about, you know, this this common fight that we're in together. Um, because I think that's the last thing we need is that, that collision um, Rob, I mean, that's going to be it's not going to be good for anybody if that happens. Uh, I agree. And I think that conversation about risk with the client, particularly as relates to vendor tools and, and a disclaimer of responsibility by the MSP and the vendor, if that's the case, you know, that's something that, you know, needs to be understood by the client. Yeah, absolutely. Rob, appreciate you coming back on the MSP zone and explaining the, uh, the difficult as always, uh, very, very valuable feedback. Thank you, Charlie. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope you uh, are able to enjoy an adult beverage or two today. I'm sure that's coming uh, in, in short order. 
Uh, if you Wonderful. are interested in joining the MSP Zone is, as a guest, if you'd like to join Rob and myself uh, and ask some questions, uh, come on the program, we would love to have you. Uh, send us a quick email at mspzone at mspalliance.com and drop us a note. Tell us who you are. Tell us uh, you know what you're interested in talking about, and we'd love to have you on the program. This is Charles Weaver. Until next time, on the MSP Zone. <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode, please give us a like. Make sure you are subscribed to the podcast so you will get notified when future episodes are released. We will see you next time in the MSP Zone.